the sights. Back with another Magnus Ansys. Woke up this morning and decided to read. Read the petitions, to read the questions, to read the dilemmas that you all are involved in, and then descend from my throne of thought. The God with the dark moon here will answer your question now. All right. This one says, hey man, hey man. It says, can you keep my name anonymous? Thanks. New Magnesite needs you to descend from your throne of thought to answer my question. My question, that's how he would say it, my question. Okay, now, so I'm apologizing for the length up front. I'll try to read it fast, y'all. All right, first I just subscribed you last week. Just doing my part to keep, uh, to help you reach your 1 million mark. And I've already watched like 50 of your videos. Ah, okay. You and Sarah, keep up the good work and I will continue to support your channel. Thank you. Here's the backstory for my question. Me and my girlfriend have been together for two years and we went to the same college, but now I'm transferring colleges because I will have a better financial situation at my new school. I took this semester off from school because I got accepted late. So I'm at home working until January when I go to my new school while she is at my old school. She has uh, bad past experiences with long distance uh, relationships. This is my first ever relationship, so I'm cool with it. She says keeping communication is the key. That's true. And I agree, um, but she wants to text me all day, every day. I mean, 24 seven, it's crazy. How much she texts me. Then she calls me every night, and after I get off work, she's upset and says I, I'm acting distant if I haven't texted her after a few hours. I don't have anything to say because she texts me so much. <laughs> Ran out of shit to say, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, there's, then she gets upset and says I don't want to talk to her. She wants me to uh, talk, but we're always talking, so I run out of things to say. That's what I said. <laughs> One time I told her she was being clingy and I needed some space and she got really upset. I'm still hearing about that to this day. It was the way you worded it, son. It's all in how you deliver it. I think she's afraid that I'm going to cheat or leave her and I keep reassuring her that she is only, that she's the only woman for me, but she keeps saying stuff like that. I don't know what to tell her without getting her upset. Finally, here's my question. Can you give some advice on how to handle my situation, please? And what would you do? Um, here's the thing, man. She is fucking scared. She is scared. She is really worried that you are going to do her like the others did. Apparently, if she had bad situations and, you know, happened to her in long distance relationships, then she's already been hurt before. She's already been burned. And you know what I mean? It's it's just like anything else in life that you might be worried about. Okay, so you have to put her yourself in her shoes so that you understand why she's so worried. And I'm sure you do from the way you've written it, okay? So understand that first. Now, then you want to communicate to her, of course, that you are not cheating on her. But you have done that, right? You've done that already. You've told her she's the only woman for you and you made the mistake of saying you need some space. Don't ever say that because that scares someone. When someone says, I need space, that means I'm getting ready to break up with you. Normally, okay? This is your first girlfriend, right? Okay, so you ain't got no, you know what I mean? You're just getting into this. It sounds like you're handling it fairly well, but that's where you fucked up. You know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up. You said that you needed some space. What's she supposed to think that? Mm. That's right. Okay? And if y'all know what that's from, that's from Men's Society, and I'm too old, and y'all should watch another channel. <laughs> so anyway, look. Um, you're going to have to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart with her. And what I want you to do is kind of come to an agreement. First of all, ease her fears. I'm not cheating on you. I know I said you were being clingy, which I kind of do feel that, but 
I'm in no way about to leave you or thinking about leaving you. You're the only woman for me. Trust me on that. But the problem is with law of attraction also, if you think about when people vibrate, vibrate fear, when they think about things that are they're fearful about, usually ends up happening. So you have to ease her fears so that you stay together because what she's going to end up doing is she's going to end up making you angry and pushing you away into another woman's arms. That's what's going to fucking happen. Trust me, it can happen. So that's one thing, but you want to sit down and you want to actually have a discussion. You want to ease her fears and then you want to figure out how can we communicate with each other on a regular basis? What's a good amount of time for us to talk to? You know what I mean? Like, like you have to come to an understanding that, listen, you don't need to text me every all day, every day for me to, to not leave you or to know that I love you. I love you, babe, okay? But you got to realize I'm at work. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I can't always, you know, answer you. You have to, to, to break that barrier down so you can say, okay, what do you actually need from me? Do you need me to say, I'm not cheating on you, I love you, I'm, I'm never going to leave you? Do you need me to say, like, what do you need to make you feel safe and comfortable? If it is something that is manageable for you, then do it. If it's not, then you need to say, listen, I cannot text you constantly when I'm at work or when I'm doing this or when I'm doing that, okay? What do you know what I mean? Can we come to some even agreement here? To, like, for example, when I um, did work, when I sold cars, you know, Sarah wanted to talk to me a lot, and um, it never got to a, a problem, but, you know, she, she, um, you know, she didn't talk to me all the time, and I worked night, 9 o'clock to 9 at night. So I had to kind of take little breaks and kind of, you know, give her calls or text her, you know what I mean, which is reasonable, you know, to, to let her know that, you know, hey, I ain't fucking around, you know, I'm still at the job, you know, stuff like that. But that's what I think that y'all should do. And another thing that could happen is I'm glad you wrote me because what could happen is that if you continue to, say, get angry and, be like, stop texting me and stuff, she could get scared. And all of a sudden, some other man could start paying attention to her. She could run into his arms for affection and attention because she's so scared things are going to blow up with you. And that could be a whole nother hairy problem. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that. So next time, just call her today. Sit down and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Ask her what she needs. Tell her how you truly, truly feel about the situation and that you're not planning to do shit behind her back and you love her to death and so much. One thing you could do, you know what, to women like the little things, is send her a love letter, send her cards, send her flowers, send her little presents in the mail to let her know that you're thinking about her. You do once a week, you do once every other week, just so she knows. Because you probably ain't doing that. Most men don't think to do that, but it's my experience as a man, you know, going through a bunch of shit in my different relationships that... You know, the little things mean something to women. So do that, okay? Send a text from time to time. If she decides to stop with the all-out onslaught of text, you know, so if it's pretty much non-existent now, the texts become, you know, non-existent, from time to time send a I love you. You know, send thinking of you. You know, send stuff like that so that it reassures her. Because right now she's very insecure. And only she can fix her insecurity, but you can kind of help her across the finish line to get into security. You know what I mean? Put your arm around me. Come on. We're going to limp across the line together. I'm going to help you get there, baby, so that you are secure and you know that your man ain't going nowhere. All right? I hope this helped. I'm not really telling you to be a pussy or a pushover and cater to her, but I'm just saying she's going through something because you used to be there every day and now you're not. Y'all went to the same motherfucking school and you are gone now and you're about to go to another one, okay? And it could be all a bunch of bad bitches and different situations there that could get you in trouble. So I see why she's worried, you know? I, I know that a person going to cheat, people say, a person going to cheat, they're going to cheat, you can't stop it. I, yeah, I know. But, you know, it's kind of like this. Um, you know, say I'm blow up. All right, say I blow up, which I will, but I'm, what I'm saying is say I blow up, and then you have to invite me to the Playboy Mansion, you know what I'm saying? Now, look, I could get invited to Disney World also. 
Which one do you think Sarah is going to be more comfortable with me being invited to? Exactly. Exactly. I ain't even got to say it. So that's the reason why. Sometimes, just certain situations, you know, hey, you know, hey, your man gets shipped out to war. Hey, is he going to be on base doing paperwork or is he going to see the action? Which do you think his family is going to be more worried about? All right, then. That's what I'm saying. You go in to see action. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hope this ain't been too long. Hope I answered all your questions, man. You should be good, all right? Oh, man, subscribers. Woo!